Today's topic is what are 2024 income requirements for marriage-based immigration? This is Fred Wall, the visa coach. Usually about a year after first submitting your application for a fiancé or spouse visa, or as part of the initial application when applying for adjustment of status to obtain permanent residency, you must provide clear evidence of your income to convincingly demonstrate your future family and household will not need welfare or other public benefits. It is critical to understand before you are at the stage, at this stage, what the financial requirements are so as to avoid surprises, maybe denial. And in case your income does not meet the eligibility requirements, please watch towards the end of this video as I will show you how you can solve this problem. So I am Fred Wall, the Visa Coach. I personally walk, work with you, preparing for you the forms and documents needed to bring your loved ones home to the USA. And unlike those common second-rate services that abandon you once your application has been submitted, I'm going to remain with you, providing support throughout this complicated immigration journey. Now, let's talk about income requirements for marriage-based immigration to the USA in 2024. In order to successfully petition for your spouse or fiancé to come to the USA or obtain a green card after marriage in the USA, you, the US sponsor, must demonstrate to US immigration that you have enough income coming in to support your new spouse and whole household. The minimum financial requirement is that you must have income equal to or preferably more than 100% of the poverty income level where you live to be eligible to sponsor a fiancé visa and over 125% of the poverty level to be eligible for spousal visa or adjustment of status. And often, even when applying for a fiancé visa, the counselor officer might apply the higher 125% range at his or her discretion. So it's best, whenever possible, to aim to exceed the higher standard. Each year, the Department of Health and Human Services publishes their poverty guidelines. And as of March 2024, for residents in the continental USA, the financial eligibility requirements are as follows. Required annual income for a fiancé visa, $20,440 if two persons are in the household, $25,820 three persons, $31,200 if four persons, and for each additional person add $5,380. Now the required annual income for a spouse visa or green card, $25,550 for two persons, $32,275 three, 39,000 is four, and for each additional person, 6,725. The financial eligibility thresholds are lower for active military and higher for residents of Alaska or Hawaii. Proving your income. Well, normally you provide your most recent, well, federal tax return, three to six pay stubs showing year-to-date earnings, plus a letter from your employer confirming your job and what your expected annual pay is. If your income might be low, but you have money in the bank, your cash assets can be used as an alternative for annual income. Cash assets are assets which can be easily converted, sold to cash. For example, stocks, bonds, certificates of deposit, cash in the bank. You may have a lot of other assets such as your car, boat, coin collection, beanie baby collection, business or investment property, but because these cannot be easily turned to cash, immigration does not accept them as alternatives to annual income. The one exception to an asset that is hard to convert but can be counted is your home. If the market value of your home is higher than your mortgage, you may use the equity just like a cash asset. Now five dollars of cash assets is the equivalent of one dollar of annual income. So for example, a retired fiancé visa sponsor living in California with no income and no dependents would need to have five times 20,440 or 102,200 in cash assets to qualify for the fiancé visa. Alternatively, a combination of income and assets can work. For example, if the sponsor's income is $10,000 per year, but then his annual income is short by $10,440, so he should have five times that amount, or $52,200 cash, 
or convertible assets to qualify. This is calculated by subtracting 10,000 from the annual requirement of 20,440 and then the difference of 10,440 times 5 equals 52,200 of cash assets needed. Now what if you don't have enough income or assets? Well in that case you could ask a relative or friend to act as a co or joint sponsor. And just like buying a car, your joint sponsor could co-sign your loan. Now when a joint sponsor is used, the size of the household increases. The combined household for the financial calculations would include the household size of the sponsor combined with the household size of the co-sponsor. For example, a college student petitioning for his fiance asks his father to join to be the joint sponsor. Now both the college student and the father would each complete an affidavit of support. The student's household has two people, himself and his fiance. The father's household would be the father, mother, and the two siblings still living at home. Thus the combined household would be six persons. And the combined income of both sponsor and joint sponsor would have to total 41960 or more. Now a joint sponsor can be used for any spousal visa or adjustment of status petition and can be used for most fiancé visa petitions. However, not all consulates allow the use of a joint sponsor for a fiancé visa. For example, Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam, Nigeria do not. Now if you are applying for a fiancé visa and need a joint sponsor before filing the application, well best is to contact the consulate directly and confirm whether the consulate's policies permit the use of a financial joint sponsor or not. If they won't allow a co-sponsor, then, well, switch plans. Marry, then apply for a spouse visa, and your co-sponsor can certainly be used when needed. This was Fred Wall, the Visa Coach. Now, I am here to personally guide you on this journey. Click here to sign up for our monthly newsletter and receive bonus eBooks. Here for YouTube's recommendations. Here for the full playlist of recent videos and on marriage-based immigration. And here to subscribe to our channel.